probably the most important factor to a good horror game is the setting. When you think of Resident Evil 2, you think of the RPD station. When you think of Silent Hill, well, you think of the entire damn town of Silent Hill. In order for the developers to really immerse the players into the experience, they really have to think about what locations to include in their games. And this is even more important for horror games as one of the key traits of these games deals with atmospheric horror. And the fact is that some locations make more sense for horror games than others. Something about taking a real life location and turning it into a terrifying experience for the players just really gives us goosebumps. Which is of course going to be our topic on this episode of Nerdspace Games. I've dived down into every major horror game I can possibly think of to help me solidify which type of locations make for the scariest experience for gamers. So my name is Ruben with Nerdspace Games and here are my top 10 scariest type of locations in horror games. Let's get it. And before we get started with today's episode, let me introduce you to our sponsor, me. Yeah, that's right. I just wanted to plug in myself and let you guys know two different things. First off, we do have Patreon available for those of you interested in finding ways to help support this channel. We have multiple perks for both Stars, Alpha, and Bravo team members. Specifically, any Stars, Alpha team member gets the opportunity to select one list video I do per month and one Jeopardy category I do each month. If you're interested in joining Patreon, you can click the link in the description or simply head over to www.patreon.com slash nerdspacegames. Thanks in advance for your consideration, guys. And my last bit of news is that Nerdspace officially has a Discord group. Join the Discord group to join the community, talk with other gamers, and even chat with yours truly. It's a small community that is growing each passing day, and the bigger it gets, the more fun it'll be. And it's completely free to join, so why not? The link is in the description and hopefully I'll see you there. Now, back to today's video. Silent Hill. You promised you'd take me there again someday. But you never did. Well, I'm alone there now. In our special place. Waiting for you. Number 10, Small Towns. Small towns are a staple of horror movies and games. Something about being in a small town with little to no phone service, barely anybody, and just the overwhelming feeling of something isn't right around here just screams horror. The perfect example of a small town done right in a horror game is of course Silent Hill. The entire series focuses on different characters coming to this mysterious town searching for something. Whether you play as Harry Mason searching for his missing daughter or you play as James Sunderland searching for his dead wife, something about Silent Hill as a town gives you an uneasy feeling. Yeah, I'm looking for Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Um, yeah. It's hard to see with this fog, but there's only the one road. You can't miss it. Thanks. But... Yes? I think you'd better stay away. This, uh... Th this town... There's something wrong with it. Another example is Alan Wake. While not as mysterious as Silent Hill, the town of Bright Falls brings its own level of uneasiness for the player. So despite the fact small towns may be a more broad location compared to others on this list, we still find ourselves in a situation where we as players feel helpless as we slowly begin to realize that no matter where we go in this small town, nobody can save us. Number 9, Underground. Claustrophobia is probably the most common fear for people. Something about being trapped underground or in tight places immediately pushes our senses to just freak out. So it should really come to no surprise to anybody that underground locations just increase the feeling of anxiety as we play horror games. One of the most recent examples I can think of is Amnesia the Bunker. In this game you find yourself trapped underground with a creepy ass stalker monster that slowly tracks you in the dark throughout the game. 
and something about being stuck underground with this thing makes you feel helpless as there's literally nowhere to run. With no windows or daylight shining through from anywhere, you slowly start to lose your mind even as a player. You're ultimately filled with dread the longer you play this game because the longer you're trapped down here, the harder it is to picture yourself actually finding a way out. Other examples include the sewers in Resident Evil 2, the subway in Silent Hill 3, or even a new classic horror game releasing next year is Post Trauma and that's based entirely on a subway. Number 8. Hospitals A place like a hospital might not seem like a scary location for horror games, but for some reason we find them in a lot of the scariest games out there. Whether we look at bigger franchises like Resident Evil or even Silent Hill, or we take a look at some smaller games like Daymare 1998 or even Fear, these games all have one thing in common, there's a scary ass hospital in them. Something about hospitals being a place full of either creepy nurses and doctors, sinister motives deep down below under the hospital, or just blood and death everywhere you turn automatically makes us fear the location every time we enter a hospital. And maybe the biggest one to blame for this is Silent Hill. When you think of the original game, most would argue that the scariest and best location is Alcamilla Hospital. Something about the hospital in this game leaves the player with anxiety and fear every time they open a new door. Add that to how well the set designs of hospitals somehow work perfectly for gloomy atmospheres in horror games, and you'll find that you have a match made in heaven when it comes to scary places. Number 7, The Woods On the surface, being stuck in the woods alone instantly screams fear. Something about feeling lost and not knowing where to go next while also having the feeling of someone watching you is truly a deadly combination when it comes to horror. Think games like Outlast 2, Blair Witch, Until Dawn, and even Slenderman. These games are no stranger to making the players fear what's hiding in the dark in the woods. Slenderman and Blair Witch hits on the stalker-like feeling of the wood setting. They play with the idea that despite not always seeing what's out there, you still have this unsettling feeling that something or someone is out to get you. Even with games like Until Dawn and Outlast 2, despite seeing the enemies doesn't really take the fear out of it. The overwhelming fear of being lost in the woods strikes regardless of what type of monster you have to battle. That's not good. Give me a break. Number six. Prisons. Yeah, prisons are terrifying. Why? Well, I mean, it might be easier to instead ask what's not scary about prisons. A place filled with murderers, rapists, and other insane criminals all kept in one place? It should really be no surprise that developers love including prisons in video games. As a matter of fact, some of the scariest games out there either feature something similar to a prison in it or primarily takes place in one. I think one of the most terrifying horror games out there that I don't think gets a lot of love is The Suffering. You follow Torque, a criminal on death row for the murder of his family. After an earthquake, the prison is in shambles and all of a sudden horrific monsters, stuff of nightmares starts popping up all over the place. That being said, what truly makes this experience stand out is the location. Another example that I can think of is Silent Hill 2. The scenery of all the jail cells and everything else you find in Toluca prison stands out as some of the most horrifying locations you'll explore in any video game. Other games that feature small segments of prisons include Resident Evil 2, Daymare 1994, and even Outlast. 
Prisons provide an immediate fear because locked doors combined with a place that was once filled with criminals immediately give something for the players to fear even before they encounter their first monster or enemy here. Number five, haunted houses. Sometimes bigger isn't always better. Smaller locations sometimes fit better for storytelling and horror games. Even though this is a demo, take PT for example. The entire game takes place in a single small house. Yet some would argue that it's one of the scariest games to exist. Another example is the Baker House in Resident Evil 7, which again, some would argue is the scariest Resident Evil game or even Resident Evil Village where you have possessed dolls and a baby monster. Huh. Don't leave. I can't let you. Uh, you're still alive. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Before my friends murder you. That is probably the scariest part of that entire game. Or Visage, another terrifying game that takes place in a single house. I can really go on and on and on about different games that take a simple house and make it the primary setting for a horror game. And here's the thing, it actually works really well a lot of the time. Maybe it's because this setting hits the closest to home and relates to the players the most. When you think PT, the game probably comes closest to resembling your own home. So that even when you're done with the game, you still check behind every single door in your house before walking into each individual room. It has that massive of an impact on the players, in my opinion. And something that is that impactful when it comes to horror deserves a spot on this list. Number four, schools. One setting that I never truly understood why it had such a big impact are schools. Yet I always found myself terrified every time I saw one in a horror game. This is because something about evil kids is kind of terrifying. And when you create a sad and tragic scenery with the children's toys scattered all about, along with art drawings across the school, yeah, it's a very uneasy feeling. And for this reason, developers seem to love to capitalize on this feeling. That's because some of our favorite games make schools some of the most terrifying locations. Think Silent Hill 1 when you're face to face with toddler like monsters trying to feed on you. Or even Dead Space 2 when you find exploding fetuses that giggle as they run closer to you? It's creepy as fuck. Number three, old mansions and castles. And by the way, I'm including them together for this list because they are so similar in my opinion and probably would have ranked side by side with each other. So for mansions, obviously Spencer Mansion from Resident Evil is probably the most notable one. When you think of exploring the eerie halls throughout the mansion, the main hall when you first enter it, and even down to some of the rooms like the library, attic, or basement, this place is truly a horror icon. It takes some of the most simplistic designs and turns them into the most horrifying locations in any game. Resident Evil isn't the only horror game to do this though. 
I'm probably gonna butcher this, but Himuro Mansion and Fatal Frame is another extremely iconic mansion in a horror game. Something about being trapped in a giant ass house with so many doors just really hits home for us horror gamers, I guess. As for castles, well, they are also no stranger to Resident Evil and other horror games. Take Resident Evil 4, for example. Unlike a mansion which takes something somewhat familiar to you and brings horror to it, a castle actually has the ability to explore more. It makes more sense for a castle to include terrifying areas in it, like a dungeon or a torture chamber. But one very underappreciated horror game is Haunting Ground. This game also takes place in a medieval castle and honestly I find it scarier than most of the castles in Resident Evil. So rather it be an old mansion with spooky rooms or an eerie setting or a dark and gloomy castle with tortured chambers, both make for good settings in horror games. Number two, space stations and spaceships. In space, no one can hear you scream. This is the tagline for one of the best horror movies of all time, Alien. And it really does set the tone for what to expect in any game that takes place in a space station or a spaceship. I mean, think of some of the biggest sci-fi horror games out there. Dead Space, System Shock, Prey, Alien Isolation, and my personal favorite, Fort Solace. Obviously kidding about that last one, by the way. But seriously, I can go on forever listing off scary games that take place in space. Dead Space allows the consistent fear of alien-like monsters popping out from the dark vents around the ship. Alien Isolation, although we're only dealing with one singular alien, adds a new layer of fear of never knowing where this indestructible creature could be hiding next. A big reason why these games are so scary usually has to do with the fact that when it comes to space, there's really no running away. You can't just exit the ship or space station because obviously you'll be sucked into the never ending abyss. But at the same time, since you're forced to stay, you have to stand up against whatever it is that's after you. It's a lose-lose situation and games that take place in space force you to come face to face with your greatest fear in order to escape. Add that to the quote that I said earlier, it's not long before you realize in these games that you're literally alone. It doesn't matter how hard your character tries, they ultimately find themselves alone for a majority of these games. Space stations and spaceships are also known to have power issues a lot during horror games. So on top of the fear that you're alone with some sort of monsters or aliens, you also have to deal with the fact that it's going to be dark a lot in these games. Which honestly makes things so much more scarier. Still, despite how truly horrifying space stations and spaceships are in video games, they are not the scariest. Number one, asylums. So I can easily see some disagree with my list, but at the very least, you guys have to agree with me on at least one thing. Asylums are fucking scary. Me the right choice here, buddy. Probably the setting that is used in most horror games successfully, asylums find themselves to have many layers within the psychological horror genre. Rather it be Brookhaven in Silent Hill, Mount Massive in Outlast, or even the Beacon Mental Hospital in The Evil Within, you'll soon realize that the most iconic horror games that really had you shaking took place inside an asylum. There are many different reasons for why asylums are so scary to players. For one, people fear the things they don't completely understand. Asylums are usually filled with misunderstood people that ultimately terrifies a lot of us. And when it comes to the video game world, there tends to be a secret purpose behind the facility. The most common theme behind asylums in a horror game is that the patients tend to be secretly experimented on, usually leading to some serious consequences for the asylum as a whole and you as a player. Not to mention that asylums share a lot of similarities to hospitals in horror games. Everything I said earlier about hospitals can easily be applied here as well, as they share similar environments and set design choices that anything that a hospital makes scary in horror games, an asylum does just the same, if not better. Not to mention, because the game takes place primarily inside the asylum, you find yourself questioning if maybe your character has lost their mind, and you begin to wonder what's real and what's not real. Add that to the creepy rooms where experiments took place, rooms with no windows, 
and mysterious activities going on, asylums are true icons in terms of locations and horror games. But that does it for today's episode of Nerd Space Games. You know what to do. Hit up those comments and let me know what locations do you think are the scariest in horror games. Did I hit it on the nose with asylums or do you lean a different way? Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, that like button if you really enjoy this video. But as always, it's been fun and I'll see you on the next episode of Nerd Space Games. Take care.